Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Who was Rod Cameron, and why was he seen as an interesting character both in films and in reality? I will leave you with a guess. Perhaps you might remember him as the solidly built Canadian-born gentleman of an actor with his square-jawed face that reminds you of a conventional stuntman. His age-long career was not without drama, as fans continue to wonder how he was able to switch marital allegiance from daughter to her mother in a historic wind of romance. How Rod Cameron married his mother-in-law. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Hilarious things happen in a relationship, but it is ridiculous when it involves an admirable personality. Hollywood movie fans will remember Rod Cameron for his robust personality, especially that huge height that made him perfect for horror and crime-fighting roles in his movies. He exploited his physically endowed talent as a showman before taking his career journey further in Hollywood film entertainment. A man who started a career from the bench serving as a substitute for Fred McMurray, where he gradually grew to become a principal lead actor of B-Westerns and action movies within the 1940s and up to the 1950s. He was generally seen as a business-minded actor, focusing on making his money rather than popularity. Cameron was described as the electronic monster, perhaps for his outings in action pictures, especially in the horror movie The Monster and the Girl, in which he appeared. In case you come across the phrase tall in the saddle in a write-up, the writer might just be talking about Cameron. He was said to have won the attribute as an actor as a better way of presenting his sturdy and fibrous nature, as seen in those early Western films that he performed. His film and television career stretched all through the 1930s up to the 1970s, appearing in war films, action and science fiction pictures. But his most remarkable outings would be his performance in many westerns. Even as critics think he made more fruitful appearances with his unique skills in crime stories and horrors, including swing-era musicals. When his aspiration to be part of a Royal Canadian Mounted Constabulary was not approved, Cameron decided to look elsewhere for the prominence and lots of money that he has always wanted. New York became a preferred destination, but on arrival he realises that the competition was huge, so he settled for what he could get until he find his fit. He soon realises that a change of location might just be the game-changer, as he made little or no remarkable improvement to his acting career. He transported his skill down to California, where he produced his acclaimed debut movie. But like most superstars, Cameron had an urge for women and more women. Although married, he was involved in numerous love affairs with different actresses. None of them could bring him to the spotlight until he decided to divorce his beautiful young wife and sooner found himself wedding her mother in a funny and interesting twist that made his ex-director, William Whitney, openly describe him as the bravest man that he had ever seen. On why he decided to follow such an unusual line of romance, he was allegedly said to have responded that he couldn't compete with his mother-in-law, but fans have continued to wonder what may have inspired him to do what he did. Others still do not believe, prompting many of them to keep asking questions about the veracity of that information. It is obvious that they're all hoping to get details about this, as it looks more of a joke than reality. However, in the world of entertainment, it has been proven that almost everything is possible. Let's start with his childhood to know him better. Nathan Roderick Cox, the man known as Rod Cameron, was born on 7th of December 1910 in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, but was raised in New Jersey. He was reported to have graduated from Upper Iowa University, where he majored in education. There is an unconfirmed report of his father being an ex-construction staff in Canada who had a bigger dream just like his son. Cameron was very active in sports as a young man and was said to have participated well in school sports, appearing on his high school basketball team and the amateur football team. He also featured in other activities like swimming and playing ice hockey, making him an all-round sports fellow. But his physical fitness image was tainted when he failed a physical examination test to enlist in the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. 
Although highly disappointed, Cameron felt his physique would be useful in the entertainment industry as he moved to Hollywood, then as a young man full of energy. He began as a stuntman and later as a bit player for Paramount Pictures. Soon Cameron was prepared as a stand-in for production. He started appearing in films to complement his income, while also being the central character in the studio's display checks for new talent. His muscular flexibility made him a preferred choice for stunts and a regular cowboy image. He was said to have toiled for a long period as a bit player, also making insignificant appearances in classic films like Northwestern Mounted Law Enforcement in 1940, where he fulfilled his initial desire by playing a Mountie. Sometimes he would move to a noticeable secondary role, as seen in his role in The Monster and the Girl in 1941. From Heritage of the Desert alongside Donald Woods and Russell Hayden to Rangers of Fortune with McMurray, Cameron continues working hard. He was also said to have played big characters at Universal Pictures, especially in If I Had My Way, which starred famous Bing Crosby and Gloria Jean, played Jesse James in The Remarkable Andrew for Paramount. Sometime in 1943, Cameron earned a star rank in action serials for Republic Pictures, in what was described as a breakthrough from minor roles to the big deals. Appearing as that federal crime investigative agent Rex Bennett and fighting rival terrorists, notably in the Republic 15 weekly episodes of G-Men vs. the Black Dragon, where he was out to reduce the foreign enemy and protect the globe. Sooner he was reported to be in action for a similar series at the time. His popularity grew because audience reaction alone to his Black Dragon performance already made him a sensation. Hence he completed another series, Secret Service in Darkest Africa, in the same year, with Cameron again engaging opposing forces of the Axis agents. Those remarkable performances won him a place as a name in the industry and thereafter made Universal to place in a flurry of small-budget westerns with Fuzzy Knight as his comic partner. The moment renowned cowboy star Johnny Mac Brown moved out from Universal Pictures to Monogram Pictures, Cameron became a promising option. He became a replacement as Universal's Western series main. With this, Cameron was given a conventional character role in Universal's feature films. Before now, he had maintained the perfect rough-axed heroics role that he was paid to show, and so it was time to show a more lenient part of him for the ladies, as seen in his performance in Salome. Co-starring with fellow Canadian Yvonne De Carlo, Cameron appeared in Where She Danced and River Lady. As World War II rages, Cameron showed in Commando Strike at Dawn and in US Marine in Wake Island and The Gung Ho in 1943, although his character was rooted in westerns, he occasionally would perform a small variation, but most of his many dirty film showcases were either produced at Republic or Universal. When Universal restructured as Universal International alongside the retrenchment of contractors because of reduced activities in 1947, Cameron and a few others were left stranded and unemployed. He made frantic efforts for another contract to no avail until Monogram Pictures decided to hire him for an extended sequence of outdoor action pictures in 1948. He starred in Panhandle, a movie production whose script was co-written by Blake Edwards for Allied Artists. In 1949, he got a place with Bonita Granville in the comedy film known as Strike It Rich, and continued working on many westerns and other films for Republic Pictures like Santa Fe Passage in 1955, The Gun Hawk in 1963, Requiem for a Gunfighter in 1965, and so on. His Western performance took him to Europe, where he was a lead in spaghetti westerns like Bullets Don't Argue in 1964 and Bullet in the Flesh in 1965. Cameron was involved in three syndicated television series, first in City Detective between 1953 and 1955, as the hard-hitting New York City Police Lieutenant Bart Grant then in State Trooper from 1956 to 59, which is a Western-styled crime drama that saw him playing Lieutenant Rod Blake of the Nevada State Police, and The Coronado Nine in 1960 ended in 1961, when Cameron showed as private detective Dan Adams. 
Cameron Guest starred in several westerns plus six outings on NBC's Laramie alongside John Smith and Robert Fuller. In one of the Laramie occurrences known as Broken Honor sometime in 1963, Cameron and Peggy McKay appeared as Roy and Martha Halloran. They were a farmhouse couple who stumbled on $30,000 in cash inside a hard box at their residence. Cameron was similarly in NBC's Western Bonanza in 1966, showing as Curtis Wade in the double episode of Ride the Wind, including season 6, episode 18 of the Western TV series known as The Tales of Wells Fargo, among others. While many film actors might be competing to be recognised in the various Outstanding Performance Awards, Cameron was not bothered about that. Instead, he had concentrated on the business side of his career and making a fortune for himself. No wonder analysts described him as a businessman in the industry. In his book about syndicated television, Hal Erickson, referencing Cameron's business intelligence in limiting his work in TV series to syndication, noted... A canny businessman, Cameron knew that his city detective residuals wouldn't have been as fat had a major television network been claiming a percentage of the action. It was said that as of 1960, Cameron was saving over $200,000 yearly in passive income from his three syndicated programs. Before his death, Cameron was said to have once said at a film convention that he lost money on how he used to receive several publications of his comics every month, and now he had given each out to neighbourhood teenagers, but that he had seen some of the issues in the vendor's stand selling for hundreds of dollars. So much time of action for this industrious talent. Apart from his busy schedule, he also had time to unwind and take care of the family circle. His private life regarding relationships with the opposite sex was not different from other Hollywood stars but he shocked some of his fans with one great intimate decision. He married his first wife, Angela Cameron, in 1950, and in 1960 he divorced her. In the same year, he was united with her mother, Dorothy Alves Lico, who then became Dorothy Cameron in the second matrimony. The two lived together for about 23 years before his demise in 1983. The fact that Dorothy was very much older than him left a lot of people wondering why he had decided to go for mother rather than her daughter, with many questions begging for answers. Even though Cameron was involved in many mistress relationships, this is the only sombre media scandal involving his personality. It appeared that the duo worked so hard to keep their relationship undercover and did everything to keep it secret, but there was a kind of uproar in the gossip circle when the two were allegedly seen feeding each other popcorn. Throughout his fruitful career, he married two times, dated more women and had an encounter with some. Some of the women that have been identified to have had an affair with Cameron are Helena Carter, Janice Page, Marie Windsor, and an encounter with Yvonne De Carlo, 1945, all of whom were film actresses. He had a love child with Doris Stanford, a girl named Catherine, and a son with his first wife, Angela Alves Lico, named Anthony. Talking about his personality, a fellow who lived in the same neighbourhood with him recently wrote this about him. I had a chance to meet Mr Cameron. He had supper at our house when I was a kid. I enjoyed his company. Another fan who hinted at how he coordinated his fan club wrote, When I was 14 I started a fan club for Rod. He was very excited. Perhaps he did not have any at the time. There were many members of the club. I printed the Cameron Call, a monthly newsletter which I sent out to members. Adding also that he bought him an ID bracelet that has his name and the club engraved. He wore it for a long time. You could see it on his wrist in many of his publicity photos. The fellow whose name was not made public by the online forum stated. What else can we say of Rod Cameron's personality? Sometime in the 1970s, Cameron was involved in several efforts to stop alcoholism and participated actively in the Alcoholism Council of San Fernando Valley in Van Nuys, California. Severally, he was seen talking about its dangers and problems related to alcoholism among groups. The motion picture Herald and box office polls on the top 10 cowboy film stars in popularity ranked Cameron at the end of the B-Western era, as 4th in 1953 and 54 respectively. 
In the latter part of his industrious career, Cameron resided in Granada Hills, California, around 1957 before relocating to Lake Lanier in northern Georgia. A quick look at Rod Cameron would reveal his awesome height of 6 foot 5 inches, equivalent to 196 centimetres, with dark brown hair and a strong athletic build. He was a member of the following associations, American television actors, people from Greater Los Angeles, and Canadian film actors. Following an extended struggle with cancer, Cameron died on the 21st of December 1983 at the age of 73 in a clinic in the neighbouring city of Gainesville in Hall County. He was retrospectively awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. But Rod Cameron was not the only one with risky romantic decisions. How George Hamilton had an affair with his own stepmother. Find out from this video.